Hello there. Well, this is a fairy tea light and she's made with polymer clay. But before we get into it, if you love art, then you have to check out our other lessons at www.montmart.net and maybe join us on Facebook, Instagram, or subscribe to our art club, The Creative Connection. So let's make a fairy tea light. To make the armature, I'll be using a length of 3 16 booker rod with nuts and washers, a 12 millimeter spade bit, a drill, some tie wire, and two sections of timber. We have supplied an A3 image describing elevations and where the rod will be situated. I start by drilling a 3 16 hole centrally through both pieces of timber. Then use the spade bit to cut a 12 millimeter hole on only one. I lay some glue down and position the second piece of timber over it and weight it so it can dry. Whilst the base is drying, I bend the length of booker rod so it matches the profile on the A3 printout. A good pair of pliers is all that is needed. Once I'm happy with the profile, I snap the rod off at the desired point. I then apply the wing nut, followed by the spring washer, place the rod through the hole, then fit the washer, spring washer, and then tighten the wing nut from the top. Now the rod is positioned, I move on to creating the support for the arms. I find the spot in between the shoulders and cut a length of wire. I wrap the wire once around the rod and twist the wire tight. I then create a second length of wire for the other arm and follow the same procedure. I decided to strengthen these with another length of wire and make sure they are bound tightly. Next, locate the correct position of where the hips lie and fasten two lengths of wire onto the rod using the same method. Once both wires are attached, we can move on to positioning the arms and cutting them to the correct length. Don't make the final cut until the position is correct. You will notice I use an old set of calipers to transfer my measurements, but a ruler could be used also. Follow the same procedure for the legs. Well, our armature is finished and we can start fleshing in the model. I'm using Montmartre Make and Bake Polymer Clay and it's great for sculpture because it's smooth and quite soft. And this is it in the 400 gram block. We'll be baking our sculpture in two parts, but I'll explain that as we go. I've also printed out the second image in the PDF and this is the same as the first, but there's not the distraction of the armature drawn inside it. I'll also be using some modeling tools and when you open these keep the packaging because we'll be using that clear plastic for our fairy's wings. So let's get into it. When using polymer clay the ideal thickness is six millimeters so if you have an area with volume it is best to pack it up. I've found masking tape works well for this. So condition the clay and apply it to the legs first. Ensure there is no air between the armature wire and the clay. There is really two main ways to sculpt, subtraction and addition. Subtraction basically means removing the material or carving and addition obviously means to build up the model by adding bits. I think for polymer clay, it's good to use both methods. So I approximately shape the legs and hips until I have a rough form that I'm happy with. Once all the elements are in, I start to develop the shape with a hobby knife. I am mindful that when modeling a human form, there is many underlying elements to think about. Muscle tone and bones that lie under the skin and how the body dynamics work together. I find long muscles easier to depict by removing the clay around them with a knife. A calf muscle can be easily suggested by removing the clay from beneath it. All of a sudden, the form just reveals itself. Once the form is shaped to satisfaction, I smooth it all off with the wooden curve tool. If there is any areas that require more clay, I add it and smooth it in. So that's the legs in, and they're all smoothed out. Uh, now we can move on to the torso, so let's get that on. The torso is handled the same way, but there is a little more margin for error. 
because this part of the fairy will be partly covered by her dress. It still must be sculpted fairly accurately though, because this shape is what will carry the form when we add the clothing. I also have to bear in mind that ideally I want the wall thickness to be about 6mm thick. That way I won't get any surprises from cracked or uncured clay down the track. I lay the head into position. This is just temporary, but it helps me establish the correct positions for the arms. The arms are effectively handled in the same manner as the legs. I just ensure that I apply more clay than I need so I can remove it as needed. Elements like shoulder blades can be added smooth and carved to shape as required. With a little bit of close observation, one is able to make these areas look most convincing. Trim away the unwanted clay, and if you do use a knife, treat it with a little respect, because obviously they are sharp. I always think it's good to get reference too. We look at our arms all the time, but once you start sculpting, you observe them in a very different light. A little bit of clay removed in the correct spot makes a huge difference. The chest can be suggested from two crescent shaped bits of clay, then smoothed onto the torso. I create the head from alfoil tightly packed onto the booker rod and wrapped with some masking tape. I screw this into the correct position and then cover it with clay. Without doubt the head is the most challenging part to get right, but if you persevere you usually come up with something you're happy with. Everybody has their own technique. Because this is a fairy I've attempted to make the face more chiselled and the cheekbones quite high and prominent. The goal is to make her look as pretty as possible. The eye area is best handled by creating the eye sockets first and then adding the eyes into the void. I've created her with big eyes and I've closed them so she looks blissed out. I find a clean Taclon brush is very effective for soft blending. I can't wait to paint this model. That will be happening down the track so stay tuned. Okay, well, we've finished the body and the head. So now we just need to place the tea light holder uh, on top of her there. So create a shape, a rough round shape like this. Just make sure that it's about six mils thick and place it like this. Position the holder so that it is quite secure. I have a tea light candle next to me to help me get the correct position. I press the ends of the arms onto the holder and keep manipulating it until it looks natural. I then create some very simple hand shapes by cutting them with my blade and apply them onto the arms and the holder. Once they are in position, I smooth them onto the holder and refine them so they look right. I add bits and pieces where they need them. So the hands are done and we can now shape this flower. So place the tea light in the flower we can then trim it to the desired shape and bake it. I have created a line to use as a guide and then simply remove the unwanted clay with my trusty knife. I then create some first surface detail lines and then bake the model. Well, I've taken my fairy out of the oven and let her cool. It's time now to clothe her and add some hair. So we do that by rolling some clay. And I've rolled this about three and a half, maybe four mils thick. So uh, let's get this on. I use a rolling pin to thin the clay, but many people use a pasta machine with great effect. I wrap the sheet around the fairy and trim and blend any joints of clay together. It is really up to the artist to choose how to design the dress. Montmartre polymer clay is flexible yet supple and fabric can be suggested very effectively. You can see with this stage how important it is to get the underlying shape right. You can push and pull the clay around with the model beneath hardened as well. I wanted her dress to be somehow inspired by petals. One thing I will say is the longer parts of the dress have been reinforced with a second sheet of the same thickness underneath and I have thinned it out at the edges so the fabric still looks thin. I have cut the rough shape of how I want the hair to be situated. I then score grooves in it 
and add form by creating lines, cutting it in areas and basically refining it till I'm happy. I add those cute little pixie ears by pressing them onto the head and blending them with the hair. I give it a clean up with the brush. I then lay a sheet onto the base. I've added some mushrooms and these will look fantastic when I paint the model down the track. Time now for the second baking. Now the model is cured, we can add the wings. I take the third image in this PDF, place it on the table and place that modelling tools packaging on top of it and profile cut it with my knife. I then bend it to shape. I will say too that those first scores should not be too deep. I then use a hot glue gun to adhere the wings and voila. See you next time.